There were some folk at Clark Central today who knew that it was Sunday morning, and if it's Sunday morning, it's just another sign that God has been good. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He gave me strength. He gave me power. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Won't you tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm going to sing because God's been good. I'm going to pray because God's been good. I'm going to wave my hand because God's been good to me. Has he been good to you today? Has God done something for you that you could not do for yourself? How good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. And so we are here today because God has been good. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you because you're sovereign. We thank you, oh God, because when we woke up this morning, our minds were stayed on you. God, not because we were so smart, but God, because you're so good. And so right now, God, we just want to welcome you, oh God, into this place. God, we know that you're everywhere all the time, but we acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. God, we thank you for allowing us to come together today. For when we laid down last night, there were no promises. But you saw fit to watch over us. Oh God, you stationed an angel at our bedside. As we slumbered and slept, no hurt, harm, or danger came to us. And so we've come into this place to tell you thank you. We'll tell you thank you in our songs. We'll tell you thank you, oh God, in our amens. We'll tell you thank you, oh God by waving our hands. So welcome into this place. Anoint this moment, consecrate it to thy will and thy purpose. We were created to give you glory and allow your glory, O oh God, to shine forth in this day, in this time, and in this moment. And we will be careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory and all of God's children said amen amen and amen Oh! 
right on time. blessing me right now. Is that a testimony for anybody? The Lord is blessing me right now. I wish I could say it was because I was so strong that I got up this morning, but I know that it's because the Lord is blessing me right now. Amen, amen. I know there are a whole lot of folk born in the year I was born, but they're not here right now. And that's because the Lord is blessing me right now. Amen, 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 amen. God is good. I am so thankful uh, to God that we are able to continue to gather together. Uh, there's my mask. Uh-oh. Uh, that's the Holy Ghost, y'all. That's the Holy Ghost. He is here. He is here. Um, uh, amen, amen. I uh, just want to uh, say to everyone, I am so thankful to God when I look out and I see you. Some of y'all who were sitting outside, you're sitting inside the car now, but that's all right. That's all right. You are here. You are counted in the number. And I just want to point out one thing. If we can go sit outside in the chilly weather for a football game, amen, somebody, we can come on out here and give God some praise. Amen. Amen. You see, I like a good touchdown as, as much as the next person. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is good. God is good. Um, uh, uh, just a couple of announcements and then the choir's going to come back we're going to sing some more we're going to hear what does say the Lord and then we're going to let you go on where you, wherever you got to go today I uh, just want to uh, give you a, um, a couple of reminders uh, Still, we're still pushing to make sure that everybody from the top to the bottom and I don't know what that looks like in the church uh, because the top is God and everybody else comes next. And, and so if you have not yet made your pledge to our Above and Beyond campaign, we need you. We need you to be a part of this effort. God is in the midst. He is working. He's doing great things even now. And we need everybody on board. Get on board because we're going somewhere. And when we get there... Don't be looking back to say, I wish I had. If you make that sacrifice now, and I use that word on purpose because it is a sacrifice. It requires sacrifice. David said, I will not sacrifice anything that does not cost me something. I will not receive anything that doesn't cost me something. And so it is a season of sacrifice. 
but in our sacrifice remember that God is good and that God is taking us where it is that we are going we can't do it without God walking with us and we can't do it without all of your support you can call the church office um, uh, uh, and pick up a, uh, a pledge form. You can even call and just let them know. Just put my name down and this is what I'm pledging. And we'll make sure to keep you abreast of your progress as we go forward. Additionally, uh, it is, uh, it's the election season now. Uh, and we all know, I, if you didn't know how important this season is, I, I don't know what rock you have been living under. But come out. We need you here. We need you to make sure, number one, that you are registered to vote because uh, just a couple of days ago on the 15th, uh, they started receiving uh, the absentee ballots. Uh, um, uh, an event on Friday heightened the importance of us going out and voting, making sure our vote is counted. Uh, 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 Supreme Court Justice uh, Ginsburg passed away on Friday. And there is, and uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there is an effort underway by the same Republicans, same Republicans, and I don't say that in a pejorative sense. I'm saying it because, well, there are some good Republicans. I, I, I have some friends who used to know Republicans, but, but, yeah, um, but the same Republicans who refused to allow President Obama to nominate for the Supreme Court because it was the last year of his presidency, they now, six weeks out from an election, they now want to rush through to stack the courts. My brothers and sisters, that's, that's a sign of desperation. They're rushing because they know that their time is limited. Because they know deep down in their hearts that you're going to show up. You're going to show up and vote. And I believe you're going to. But remember that the last day, if you're not registered, please call the Board of Elections to find out if your registration is still current. Make sure that you do so before October 5th. That's the last day to register to vote. Because And then on the 12th, and this is what we're going to push everybody from Ebenezer to do. If you have not already requested your absentee ballot, we're asking everybody to go and take advantage of early voting. Don't leave it to the day of. You don't know what could be happening on the day of election November 3rd. So I just want to plant that seed in your hearts, in your spirits, and in your mind. Our nation needs you. Our nation needs you. Uh, my final announcement as the choir prepares to come back uh, for their second song is to let you know that I am so thankful to God that our Wednesday night sessions and Bible study have been going so well. Received so many uh, thoughts and thanks for talking over these last couple of weeks about grief. We will... We'll never end talking about it, but today is our last message on grief. Wednesday, we'll take up isolation, aloneness, and loneliness. We'll talk about how during this COVID season, we have experienced an aloneness that makes us feel like there's no hope. We'll be looking at the book of Genesis and Hagar. So please join us if you have not at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. Are the one. Come on, hear as we hear what the Lord has for us to remind us that He promised that even when friends walk away, He would never ever forsake us nor leave us alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me read our scripture, our text for today. Uh, and it comes from the gospel according to John chapter 11. The gospel according to John chapter 11, uh, verse 17. We're continuing our conversation that we started on Wednesday. 
The Gospel according to John, chapter 11, verse 17, and it begins as thus. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now in Bethany, now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the, res the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy and inerrant word for the edification of our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, we ask that you would pray with the choir as they come to render a selection, preparing us and centering us to hear what does say the Lord. Amen.
if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Won't you please put your hands together for the choir one more time? If it had not, I, I, I wish that more people, more believers would think about a question like that every once in a while. That if it had not been for the Lord on my, I was driving down the road, nodded off just a little bit, and if it had not been for the Lord, I was laying down on the operating table. The doctors had my heart open. Anything could have happened, but if it had not been the Lord on my side, I was addicted to drugs. A needle in my arm Anything could have happened to me, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Folk were dying all around from COVID-19. And I caught it. But I'm still here if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Where? Where would I be? Where would I be? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all make me want to preach that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Psalm 124. Somebody go read it after church. Don't read it right now. That's it's not going to work out. Uh, our text has been read in your hearing. The gospel according to John chapter 11 verses 17 through 27. And I want to put a tag on this text as we continue our discussion on grief. Grief. The tag I want to put on this text is simply this. Getting through but never getting over. Getting through grief, but never getting over grief. In our discussion the last couple of weeks on dealing with things that have been dealing with us during this COVID pandemic, we have been exploring grief and its tentacles in and around our lives. And so today we have come to talk about getting over through grief, but never ever getting over grief. You see, our Western culture, American culture, conditions us to keep it moving, to press our way through, and in short, simply get over it. But that's not reality, and that's not real life. You see, I came today to tell somebody who needs to hear that it's not about getting over grief. It's about getting through grief. The, the truth of the matter is that grief is the salve that we put on our lives to make us better, to begin our healing. And, and somebody listening knows today that when grief comes, you never ever get over grief. Grief never goes away. You never get over it. You, you live with grief and grief lives with you. But if you allow grief to do what grief is supposed to do, grief will make you better and not bitter. Um, grief, grief. It's an early 13th century French word with, with Nordic roots, and it means to make heavy. It means, it means, it means hardship and 
Suffering, grief means pain. That's, that's why it hurts. You'll, you'll never get over losing mama. You'll never get over dealing with losing a child. You'll never get over that loss in your life. But if you hold on, it'll get better by and by. This this, this this notion, this uniquely American notion uh, uh, that, that, that wants us to simply get back to business as usual. It's, it's, or, or, or maybe it's like Rudy Giuliani when, when after, in the aftermath of the, the, the World Trade Center attacks, uh, his best advice was just to go shopping. Even the recklessness of Brian Kemp, the governor, uh, his recklessness has become a self-fulfilling prophecy for, for that which he sought to, to, to resuscitate. Remember that word. It has all slowed down the process by forcing open a state that was grieving is dead that was grieving the losses. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, our economic and political uh, form of government, uh, uh, capitalism, yes, it's, it's both economic and political because, because it does not just commoditize things in a free market economy, but we also commoditize human beings prioritizing profits over people. Uh, what, what other nation's government would justify uh, 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 losing members, people dying, justifying the numbers of people dying because it's such a small percentage of the number of people in the nation. Grief is not an event to get over. Grief is a process and it takes time to come through grief. You don't get over grief. You must work through grief. So on this day, we come to wrap up our discussions on grief and this discussion that we started Wednesday night on that sister Martha in John chapter 11 that we started talking about on Wednesday night. And in this dramatic scene found in the gospel according to John, we learned some things about Martha that might lift her out of the dusty pages of a seldom read Bible and puts her in the very seat that you're sitting in. You see, there is some Martha in all of us, but, but the comparison stopped there because even in her frailties, we still don't match up to her faithfulness. You see, Martha, at her best, was a 21st century sister. You see, she, she, she did the doggone thing. Uh, Martha, in, 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 in Luke 10, it tells us that, that when Jesus showed up, in Bethany, it was Martha who welcomed him into her house. She, she had her own house. Uh, 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 Martha was one of those sisters who, who she was a take charge and keep charge kind of person. That she, always, she was always concerned with meeting obligations. She, she always took the lead. She didn't wait for other people to do things. If Martha saw something that needed to be done, she rolled up her sleeves and she got it done. And as happens with many people, Martha's busyness got the best of her. You see, Martha oftentimes expected other people to be as committed to the cause as she was. Martha expected other people 
people to care as much as she cared about the cause. And at times when other people did not rise up to the cause, Martha lost her cool. You remember her complaining to Jesus? I know you do. You've been to Bible study. As much as she was doing, she saw Mary, her sister, chilling like a villain. Martha was preparing and serving while Mary was sitting down with tea and crumpets, chopping it up with Jesus. And Mary got agitated. Mary got hot under the column. Here she was. She was trying not to show up. She wasn't trying to act up in front of company. So she tried to whisper into Jesus' ear about her sister doing nothing while she was doing everything and did listen to what Jesus says to her. Martha, Martha, you know when folk call your name twice, they want you to pay attention. He says, you are worried and troubled about many things. Or can I back that thing up and give you the DGB version? She, Jesus says to Martha, slow your roll, sis. You worried about the wrong thing. Jesus said, Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. So Jesus had to check Martha. But I want to put a pin right there because don't you look down on Martha. Martha was right where she was and she's right here this morning at Clark Central. It's hard, my brothers and sisters, to look down on the one who's looking back at you in the mirror. You see, Martha lives where you live. Martha eats the food in your refrigerator. Martha is sitting in your seat right now. Jesus checked Martha because Jesus loved Martha. So by the time, my brothers and sisters, we get to John 11, grief has entered the picture. But but grief uh, is like an invisible nerve gas. It's there, but you can't see it. You can't smell it. But soon enough, if you ignore it, you will feel it. And its consequences can be crippling in your life. Now, let's watch Martha try to keep on being Martha, even though there's grief and pain in her heart. The text says that as soon as Martha saw Jesus coming she went and met him and even in her beleaguered state she meets Jesus and tries to keep up appearances. She maintains a stiff upper lip and listen to what she says to Jesus. It's the first thing she says Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died and that's where most most of us uh, stop in our grieving. We stop right there at the hurt. We stop right there in our anger. We stop in the midst of our own hopelessness. When what we had hoped for we believe is no longer possible. We stop right there because as quiet as it's kept you don't like to talk about this with your family. You don't like to talk about it at parties but a whole lot of us. We find comfort in our helplessness. We find comfort in our hopelessness. It's a place that we can keep our own little white flag of surrender. We keep it close at hand. A place where we can throw a personal pity party. And I need you to know that that's troublesome my brothers and sisters because when you sit in your helplessness and your hopelessness and in your hurt you get stuck in a place where God never meant for you to be staying so let me see if I can help you out 
I love Psalm 23, now, verse 24, now, uh, verse, uh, ver Psalm 23 now, and verse 4, now, because it says, Yea, though I walk through now, the valley of the shadow of death, y'all missed it because I stumbled, now, but I need you to hear the text. Now, don't let the familiarity now, with God's word now, dull your senses now, to the power now, in the scriptures. Now, Verse 4 in Psalm 23 says, Yea, though I walk through, y'all missed it again. The text says, Yea, though I walk through. Notice it didn't say, Yea, I stop in the vein. It doesn't say, Yea, I took a rest. No, it doesn't even say that I was tired, so I set up shop in the valley of the shadow of death because I got some good news and some bad news. I'll give you the good news first because I know how Christians are. You see the good news is that you're going to come through the valley you're in but I got the bad news everybody is going to have to go through some valley experiences. I got my valleys. You got your valleys. All God's children got some valleys you're going to have to go through. But I got some more good news for you. The better news is that when you come through the valley, the good news gets better. You can't run through the valley because you're might miss what God is doing around him. You might miss some of the details of the brand new testimony that God has given you as you come through the valley. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I walk because if I run, I might stumble. I walk because God is up to something marvelous I walk because trouble don't last always I walk because his rod and his staff they comfort me is there a witness who knows I'm gonna walk through the valley because God is making me better Uh, uh, I'm so glad that Martha didn't stop at hopelessness. She, she, she kept going. Martha comes through the hopelessness of her brother dying, and she issues a faith statement. She says, well, listen to, listen to Martha. She says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. She's, yeah. She said, but even now, uh, 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 but even now is, is a powerful statement from somebody with a broken heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds a little foreign, but watch this. Even now, but even now, is a blessing when you hear it from somebody grappling with the reality of losing her only brother. And I need somebody to know that, but even now, has power to liberate you, to set you free. Uh, uh, uh. But even now, yeah, it's not coming through, Tony. It ain't coming through. Let me see. Let me see what I can, uh, 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 um, uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter three, uh, where, where the Hebrew boys are on, tr uh, on trial, uh, 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 before Nebuchadnezzar because, because they wouldn't bow down to his golden statue. Uh, that, that statue stood 90 feet high and it was nine feet wide. They, they faced the ultimate penalty of being thrown into the, the, the fiery furnace all because 
they did not obey the decree to fall down and worship uh, the, the golden statue at the sound of the instruments. But watch this. When they were put on trial, they were made aware of the penalty. And then they put a little salt in the wound and said, now tell me who's going to save you. And the boys, the Hebrew boys said, said look, man, we, we don't feel uh, 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 the need to answer you in this because our God can deliver us. But, but they didn't stop with what God can do. You see, they, 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 they went, they, they added some, but not, but if not faith to it. They said, but even if he doesn't deliver us, we, we, we still will not worship your gods and we will not bow down to your golden statue because our God is able. But even if he doesn't do it now, he's able. Uh, uh, the text, watch, watch, watch the text because this is when things uh, begin to unfold and we begin to see what Jesus saw. You see, Martha gives a declaration of faith, but Jesus knows her heart isn't in it. Ooh, we. Uh, uh, she gives a declaration of faith, but Jesus knows she's just going through the motion she's just doing what Martha always does but but Jesus sees her brokenness uh, Jesus sees her open wound Jesus provides the comfort that he knows she needs so he tells her don't worry sis your brother will rise again but Martha being Martha, she's, she's still got on her mask of self-control. Uh, uh, and, and she gives Jesus her best Sunday school answer. She, the, the, the trouble with her response is that it betrays her faith statement in verse 22. She says, I know he will rise again. And the resurrection at the last day. And it's right here, right here, that Jesus breaks through the layers of her guarded grief and sheds light on the scriptures for us even today. You see, all of us have a, a quick and ready answer when the world speaks to us in our grief. We, we say, oh, I'm good. Uh, uh. I'm pressing on the upward way. That's, that's what they used to say in the church. Hey, hey, say, we say, I'm, I'm all right. And, and, and some of us even quote scripture, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. But Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I got to admit to you, I, I didn't see this Wednesday, but, but yesterday in my, in my prayer closet, I, 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 that question caught me off guard. You see, I was startled by the question, do you believe this? Because she just gave Jesus a faith statement. She said, but even now, she said, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Didn't she just tell Jesus that she was a believer? She just got that out of her mouth. Yet Jesus looking at Martha Dead in the eyes sees a fracture in her response. He sees a fracture in her spirit, in her belief. Her brother's death has rocked her world, but Martha couldn't show it to Mary. Her brother's death had taken her to places she never thought she'd go, but she couldn't show it to all the other people. 
See, Martha was the one that everybody turned to when things got rocky. Martha was the one that, that everybody depended on to hold everything together. Martha was, was the one who was always working it out when everybody else was sleeping. But even when those who depended on her, when they can't see that she's lost in the grips of grief, Jesus can see everything. But Martha tries to keep on being Martha. So Jesus gets even more stern with the read the whole chapter when you get home. Jesus has to say to her in verse 40, did I not just say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? In other words, Jesus has to say to Martha who keeps pressing forward and Jesus is trying to get her to back up. He says to Martha, Martha, go sit down somewhere and let me do what I came to do. Now, you see, it wasn't her faith that was coming through. Now, it was her worry shining through. Now, it wasn't her faith. It was her pain. Now, it wasn't her faith. It was her unbelief that was shining through. Now, Jesus says, Martha, go sit down uh, watch Jesus Jesus gives us everything we know about connecting our grief to our healing through our belief let me say it again I want y'all to connect that now uh, Jesus gives us everything we need to connect our grief to our healing through our belief. In verse 4, in, in verse 22, Jesus says, Do you believe this? To which Martha, Martha comes through giving the Sunday school answer again. Martha gave him the threefold answer. Martha was deep in her. She, she was so, she, Martha said, Martha says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, number one, that you are the son of God, number two, and that you are the one who's come into the world. Martha was on the top of her game, but her words were empty because her answer would have been good for us, but it wasn't good enough for Jesus. You see, Martha was conditioned to hold everything together. Martha was, was on cruise control. She was prepared, so she gave the textbook answer. But I need somebody to know that in grief, the right answer does not always equal the correct answer. Because when you're grieving, there are just some questions you're going to need to continue to search for the answer. Jesus asked her, Martha, but do you believe this? I don't, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I believe when Jesus says, do you believe this? That this, whatever this is, was important. Uh, back in Luke 10, Jesus tells Martha that Mary chose that good and it won't be taken from her, but, but that is not this. Jesus says, Martha, do you believe this? This has to be wrestled with. This has to be reconciled. Jesus says, do you believe this? And if you're going to see, Ebenezer, what the text is trying to get us to understand, you've got to see the gravity and the depth of this. Uh, let me... Let me see if I can help you out through some scriptural references. In, in Genesis chapter 2, Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and 
flesh of my flesh. Uh, uh, in Psalm 20, Psalm 118, uh, tw verse 23, he says, uh, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Uh, that 24th verse says, this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, 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 the, the disciples in Mark 4 uh, being tormented on the, the Sea of Galilee, uh, they asked a question amongst one another. Uh, what man of man, of man is this uh, that even the wind and the waves obey him? Uh, I need somebody here today, today to know uh, that whatever this is uh, in your life, uh, you need to sit down for a spell uh, and talk to Jesus about it uh, because whatever this is, uh, you need to know. Uh, I believe Martha missed Jesus' question. You see, she didn't quite understand all that this was. See, she, she did a good job of answering what she thought Jesus asked, but, but she didn't really answer what he did ask. See, Martha was, was like a lot of Christians. Uh, uh, she, did, she, she was so busy taking care of everybody and everything else in her season, her own season of grief, that Martha had not taken the time to truly deal with her own grief. Uh, Martha had a good grip on what was happening around her, but she didn't have a grip at all on what was going on inside her. So Jesus has to help her in spite of her. He had to loose her from hiding. So Jesus says, Martha, I know you say you believe, but my question is, do you believe this? Mm. Inquiring minds ought to want to know at this juncture, what is this? And if that's the question that's ruminating in your mind, you're right where you ought to be. Thank you for not falling asleep. See, that question, what is this, is a good question, but it's not a new question children of Israel as they were wandering through the wilderness they, they had had no food so God gave them manna and that's good but the blessing is in the manna uh, in, in what manna means you see when they first received the manna it didn't look like anything else they'd ever eaten uh, it didn't look appetizing to them. Didn't look like the Egyptian food that they'd been eating for 400 years. So watch this. What we call manna in English is translated from the biblical Hebrew of manna, which means what is this? Ooh manna in biblical Hebrew means what is this? This and that's a long ways to go to get you to see the connection between man being a blessing from God that God gave to the children of Israel while they were wandering around in the wilderness of their own trauma, their own grief. God gave them a blessing of new life and new possibilities. And I charge you right now today that. 
that when Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? Jesus was getting Martha ready for a brand new life and brand new possibilities. But in order for her to experience new life and new possibilities, there was some stuff that Martha was going to have to put down. There was some baggage she was going to have to leave on the carousel of life. There was some old habits she was going to have to drop. Martha could not answer Jesus' question because she had too much stuff piled up in her heart. Is there anybody here today who knows there's some stuff you're going to have to put down? Martha had to let go so Jesus could bless her. If your hand is closed, God can't put anything in it just like your heart. If your heart is closed up, God can't bless you. Open up your heart and let God go to work. Shout yeah. Uh, uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. Martha still can't hear Jesus' question. Because Martha is too caught up wearing her different masks of control and ignoring the pain of what was going on inside of her. Let me me see if I can help you so we can go. Uh, When Jesus asked Martha... Do you believe this? Jesus was getting her to see that what she thought she understood, she didn't really understand because every word out of her mouth was about resurrection. Huh? Uh, uh. But what Martha didn't realize, what she couldn't see, That while she's talking about her brother is going to get up or going to be raised in the resurrection at the last day. What she didn't realize was that the resurrection was standing right in front of her. That's why Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, no, Martha, I am the resurrection. If you believe in me, if you you believe Martha in me even when you die you shall live and just remember watch this watch this I, I, I went too fast watch this uh, remember the first thing that Martha says to Jesus in verse 21 she says Lord If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And so Jesus needed to clarify for her that what she was saying was different from what she meant. Ooh, we blitzo is on this thing today. Watch this, watch this. She was saying resurrection, but what she meant was resuscitation. She said, if you had been here, you could have resuscitated my brother. Oh, so, so, that ain't good. That ain't good. There was a miracle getting ready to happen, but it couldn't happen until Martha truly believed. And I know that somebody asked, Blood, so what's the big deal? Why are you messing around to my resuscitation? Hold on, hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming. Watch this. Resuscitation is when you revive someone from unconsciousness. Uh, uh, In other words, it's somebody who is near death but not dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, And so life has to be evident in order 
to resuscitate. Martha was still caught up with the fact that Jesus didn't hurry back to Bethany so he could resuscitate her brother. All right, all right, all right. But, but watch this. If all Jesus was going to do was to resuscitate Lazarus, Jesus would have shown up when he heard that his boy was sick. But the text says that after he heard that the one he loved was sick, Jesus stayed in the place he was for two more days because Jesus knew that the unbelief in Athens, Georgia was deeper than resuscitation. Jesus knew that some things had died and so it wasn't resuscitation. It was time for a resurrection. Uh, watch, watch this, watch this. By the time Jesus shows up, uh, 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 Lazarus had been dead four days. But Martha says, she's still handling business. She still ain't getting the point. She says, Jesus, by now, there's a stench. Lazarus, beyond the shadow of a doubt, is gone. This is why you have to take time to grieve. You can't just go through the process going through the motion. You've got to go through the process of healing. Now, when you don't allow your body to heal, now, when you don't allow your mind to heal, now, when you don't allow your soul to heal, now, you lose, you get lost in a place where you can't get yourself out. You'll get stuck in a rut in your life. Now, you'll begin to ask God, why have have you forgotten him? Why won't you answer me? I'm calling, but you're not answering. When you get caught up in your grief, you'll be lost and nobody can find you. But God, when you allow the grieving to take place, you'll open yourself up for God to do the healing. Jesus said, Martha, do you believe this? because this uh, ain't that uh, this uh, is resur that uh, is resuscitation uh, and it revives uh, the unconscious uh, but this uh, is resurrection uh, and it brings life uh, out of death uh, this uh, is resurrection uh, because it brings good things uh, back to life uh, and I'm just wondering uh, I'm going to be sermonically knows him because I got a question about you. Is there anybody who can testify that you haven't always been in church on Sunday morning? You haven't always walked with God. There was a time when even though you looked alive, you were DOA, dead on arrival, dead in your sins, but that was then, and this is now. Is there anybody willing to testify that you're living witness that God can, God can, God can bring good things back to life? Tell your neighbor, I'm a good thing. I'm a good thing. I was dead. Can I help? Can I can I have two minutes? Can I have two more minutes? Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, uh, uh. I want I want to help somebody today. Watch this. See, I, I got another twist in the text. See, uh, uh, the greatest miracle in this text is not when Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. 
That ain't it. If you thought that was it, you missed it. Watch this. The greatest miracle in this text is not even when he says, loose him and let him go. I like that. I like it, but that ain't the greatest miracle. Uh, the greatest miracle in this text has nothing to do with bringing Lazarus back to life. The greatest miracle was bringing Martha back to life. Martha died on the inside and Jesus saw it and he needed he didn't need to resuscitate her. He needed to revive her. He needed to resurrect her. That's why he said Martha do you believe this because there's power in this y'all stop blowing stop blowing I got 30 seconds I got 30 seconds don't y'all using my time watch this there's one last thing one last thing watch this I, w I wouldn't come this far just to leave you watch this I, I have to admit that as I wrestled with the text I began to question the text and and the question was, why did Jesus do that? What was in it for Jesus? Uh, and I know my grandmama said, don't, don't you question God. But, but I had a question. And the answer came through the power of the Holy Spirit. Letting me know that Jesus' resurrection of Lazarus was one last sign, one last display of his own power over death. And Jesus needed believers to remember the, what they saw then because just a few days later, he was going to tangle with death again. He was going to overcome death again. He was going to defeat death again because the resurrection of Lazarus was nothing but the upcoming attractions because he was going to be strung up on a Friday afternoon. I need somebody who doesn't know the story to know that on a Friday about 2,000 years ago they hung him high they stretched him wide he cried out Father into thy hand I commend my spirit he gave up the ghost dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder he was pierced in the sides he was buried in a borrowed tomb a stone was rolled and sealed on the door he stayed dead all day Friday he died all night Saturday he died all day Saturday but early early is there a witness before the dew hit the grass early before the sun rose in the east he got up with all power in his hands. He got up, but death stayed down. He got up, cause the grave could not win. He got up, because there was no sting of death. I need somebody to know today that there's power in the resurrection. There's power and getting up so is there somebody here today who still wants to know what is this this is your resurrection this is your day this is your new life this is your new possibilities is there a witness who knows that there's power in this there's power in this tell your neighbor there's power in this because God is my resurrection
resurrection. God doesn't just want to resuscitate me. He wants to resurrect me. I got it. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! There's power! There's power! There's power! There's power! There's power! There's some good in me! And I'm gonna walk the walk! I'm gonna talk the talk! I'm going to serve my God! There's power! In me, there's power. doors of the church are open. Is somebody here today? There's grief buried in your heart. Ten years ago, two weeks ago, But that grief is buried in your heart. And it's got you stuck. You can't go another further in your life. Because there's some unresolved grief. In your life. Maybe it's not because you lost a loved one. Maybe it's the grief because your life is not what you had hoped it would be. Maybe your grief is because of a marriage that didn't work. Grief doesn't have to destroy you. Grief does not have to make you bitter. It can, through prayer, make you better. If you're here today and you want to be better, if you want to be better, won't you come? I don't care how far away you are. Now is your time. This, this moment before time and eternity was shaped and molded for you. He died on an old rugged cross. And I need you to know that his name was not on that cross. It was your name. And my name. He chose you. Won't you choose him back? Won't you come? Come now. Come now. I don't want to move further because you haven't made up your mind yet. 
But this is your time. This is your time. You can come now and surrender to him. All to Jesus. Won't you bow with me in prayer? Eternal and everlasting God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in this place at this time. God, we thank you for your workings through grief in our lives. God, we pray for the strength to be able to reconcile with the fact that we'll never get over the grief. But we can get through it. God, heal us. Heal the breach. Heal our brokenness. Help us to see, oh God, that there's power in your name. Because as the world tries to tear us down, only you can build us back up. God, we thank you for this day that you created. Now, oh God, go with us as we leave this place, but never ever from your presence. Now unto him who's able to keep you and to present you faultless before his glorious presence with great joy. To the only God, our Lord and our Savior, through Jesus Christ. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. May it rest, rule, and abide within each and every one of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's children said amen, amen, and amen.